Hi, my name is Shannon Stewart, and this is my uh, critical assignment on the show Parenthood. Parenthood was a show on NBC that ran for six seasons. It featured the Braverman family as they navigate the daily life, struggles, and triumphs of being in family. Each episode was interwoven with various stories that build off the previous episodes, but all come back to the central theme of, sh of the show as they end with a gathering of the family regardless of the circumstances or hardships they are going through. Here is a look at the Braverman family tree, as it was during the first season. There were later children added, and since Crosby has just learned of Jabbar's existence, I have placed a question mark since he was in the process of requesting a paternity test during this episode. He, of course, was confirmed to be a son, but that comes later. The show revolves around three generations of the Braverman family. Zeke and Camille, which are the patriarch and matriarch, their four children, Adam, Sarah, Crosby, and Julia. Each have their own families over various stages and ages, and they are each unique in the way they have chosen to parent. This show depicts the realistic life within the family unit and, a sh and shows a variety of key communication theories. For purposes of this presentation, I am going to focus on the storyline of Sarah and Amber and also Julia. The first storyline takes place during a back-to-school night for Amber, Sarah's daughter. Uh, she is given high praise from Amber's English teacher named Mr. Sear. He raves about Amber's crea creative ability and recommends that she has a bright future. Later, Sarah finds out that the paper Amber turned in was Sarah's from high school. The, she goes to the school to tell Mr. Sear the truth, but cannot do it when she sees how much he believes in Amber. Amber eventually tells him herself and turns in her original work when she does so. The reflected appraisal theory can be applied to Amber. While she is not the best student in most of her classes, when she turned in the paper for Mr. Sear, albeit Sarah's work, he believed her to be a brilliant writer who had a bright future. He even offered to write her a reference for a college application. According to the text, the reflected appraisal theory states that the self we present is in large part based on the way others categorize us, the roles they expect us to play, and the behaviors or traits they expect us to exhibit. It is also referred to as the looking glass self. This mirror of sorts reflected a different image back to Amber that was completely unseen in any other class and her performance was reflective of that. The situation with Amber and Sarah could actually be applied to many different theories and concepts in interpersonal communications. The perceived self is a reflection of one's self-concept and is who you are, who you believe yourself to be if you are honest with yourself. Amber, in this case, did not believe that she could turn in a quality assignment for her class, so it led her to cheat. This view, looking inward, is typically an aspect of yourself that you would be hesitant in sharing with others. Amber wanted to be a good student, but that just did not want but just did not want to put in the work. Her ideal self, being a good student, did not align with her perceived self, so she engaged in impression management, which is to ex exercise control over your behavior in an effort to elicit the desired reaction. Using Sarah's paper to boost her own grade helped Amber get a response she wanted, which was an A. The expected self is one others assume you will exhibit and is based on behaviors they have seen you display in the past. After seeing the quality of Amber's work, Mr. Sear came to expect the same quality of work in subsequent papers. When Sarah went to the school to tell Mr. Sear the truth about Amber's paper, she was impressed with his belief in Amber. Sarah had wanted Amber to apply herself, but it was difficult to break out of the negative label the other teachers had placed on her. Mr. Sear expressed the belief that Amber could go to college 
And Sarah wanted to believe in that version of Amber so badly that she changed course and did not tell him the truth. The second storyline is about Julia. Julia is a successful lawyer, so along with being controlling, Julia has always been a rule follower and very reserved. After a conversation with her siblings that they had all hooked up, quote unquote, on the merry-go-round, she discovers that she has never taken many chances for fear of getting caught. To help convince her that she can be fun and spontaneous, her husband Joel, pictured here, um, arranges for a babysitter and they sneak into the community pool after it was closed to go for an unplanned swim. Why might a conversation with her family convince Julia to go against her own intuition in favor of breaking the law, no matter how harmless it may be? The answer here relates to the social comparison theory that is used as a measuring stick against the talents, abilities, and qualities of others. Gamble and Gamble state that our self-esteem suffers if we continually feel we fall short when gauging ourselves in relation to others. In this case, Julia was made to question her careful nature in light of her siblings' actions. That concludes this portion of my critical assignment for the presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Good luck.